guys, it's Payman here from Red Cage. I wanted to make a quick video on using filters in your project. So in this instance, we have this floor plan and say the client was going to be providing some of the furniture and some of the millwork and the contractor was going to provide some of the millwork as well. So in order to visually show that separation, you would use a, a filter and that will create an override within a category based on rules that you have set up. So I'm going to keep it simple for this one and just show you a generic guideline of how I might go about doing something like this. The first thing you're going to want to do is go into manage and you're going to create a a new project parameter. In this case, I've gone ahead and made one. I called it responsibility, but you would go into add, you would call it whatever, responsibility, and keep it common, make it an instance based parameter, uh, and you want it to be text, and you can place it under whatever you want. I'd prefer to go with identity data, and then you're going to pick your categories, and in the, so in this case, we're going to be using casework. And it's also going to be applied to furniture, uh, furniture and furniture systems. So because I've already created, I'm not going to go ahead and hit OK, but that's what you would have to do. Now, once you've done that, you're going to want to go in and apply this to sp the specific items that you want the filters to be applied to. So responsibility for this, we're going to go ahead and type it in as owner this one will be the same you know owner say you wanted these cabinets here by owner the system you'd want it by contractor same with this and this once you've already got them in there you can go with contractor and then we're going to say for these furniture systems you're going to say that the contractor is going to provide. So we're going to go ahead and go contractor. Okay. Let's just make sure everything is as it should be. Ah, okay. Okay. And you're just going to go around and apply the rules to pretty much everything. Say uh, this was going to be provided by the owner okay it wasn't going to be made by the contractor or the mill workers let's say this one was going to be by owner say the desks we're going to go by the owner these chairs we're going to go by contractor I'm just using this for an example. Um, obviously, a real world situation would not be like this. For the sake of this demonstration, that's how we're going to do it. And for this one, contractor. Okay. So let's let's go with that. I think we've we've got enough pieces in here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to go into view, visibility graphics, and we're going to go ahead and create our filters here. So we're going to go edit new and we're going to create a new filter. You can get really complicated with these. You can get and and or you can use Boolean operators. In this case, we're going to keep it very simple. Uh, you don't have to make it too compli complicated. So now that we've got our rules in here, there are no categories. To, uh, there's nothing in the drop down because we haven't selected our categories yet. So for our categories, we're going to go ahead and select casework and we're going to go ahead and choose furniture and furniture systems. OK, now that we've selected it, our, our drop down is populated. So for our parameter, we're going to use responsibility and we're going to say it equals owner. All right. And once we've done that, we can apply. Now. We're going to rename this to owner. And just another thing to know, it 
it isn't until you actually specify the parameter within the family that the dropdown populates. You don't have to go about it that way. You can come into here, create your filter, type in your rules, and then go and apply them to the family. So the way I did it is one way. You can do it backwards if you want. So now that we've got our owner filter set up, we're gonna duplicate it and we're gonna rename this and we're gonna call it contractor. So by duplicating, we've maintain the categories and for our responsibility we're going to select contractor and we're going to apply it now that we've done all that we can create the filters within our view so we're going to go ahead and select owner and contractor and we're going to apply uh, for owner let's say we give it a foreground pattern of uh, green okay and for our contractor, we're going to give it a foreground pattern of um, orange. So we're going to hit OK. And uh, oop, one thing I forgot to do was set this to solid. And we're going to hit OK. And we're going to apply. Now that we've done that, you can see that the filter has taken those rules and it has applied it. Now, in the case of when it's just casework, and you only have casework being provided by the contractor, you don't need to do this. You can do an override by category, simple. When you need control over sub elements within a category, that's when you use the filter. And you can see this casework we've specified is gonna be provided by the owner. This one's by the contractor, et cetera, et cetera. In this instance, you can see that even though we've set our responsibility, the filter did not apply to this. And I'm gonna make another video that will go through the reason and how we can correct that. But for now, you can see that these furniture systems, even though like I'll change the responsibility here to owner, this one it applied it to. So you can get an idea of how you can use filters and that will allow you to really customize your views, especially when projects get really complicated and you have a lot of just different responsibilities going on and you want to sort of create separations within family categories, you use filters to, to go about doing this. Yeah.